Hello everyone, Neophys here, and welcome back to Season 2 of Neophys playing Minecraft on the Cobble Cobble server. And this is episode 41, which is part 2 of uh, uh, the Neophys Realm Tour on the Cobble Cobble server. So, we're going to try to continue where we left off in part one and show you the things that got missed now it's daytime and that's a good opportunity so we're gonna teleport right away to my home number one and home number one used to be back at the spawn but it isn't anymore and look where I ended up jeez <laughs> Okay, this isn't going to be that tough. I brought these for a reason. Just so I can more easily get myself back up. There. So here I am, way out in the wilderness. And I'm out here because... Um, Pixel Head and cap chicken nuggets and I uh, agreed to set up shop together and this is the part of the world where we decided to do it now we have a very large expanse of land here and I'm in a far wing of it up against the ocean trying to see if I can find something that I prefer but I've been wandering around here for quite some time, and I'm not getting inspired yet, especially by these guys. <laughs> so, I just keep wandering around, and because there's mobs nearby, I get the feeling one of either uh, Pixel or Cap have, have uh, wandered through here and left mobs behind. Now, desert's kind of nice, I suppose, but I really don't want to be in desert. Yeah, the Enderman's sort of attempting to take out, but I'm still in the process of just wandering around here, trying to see if I can find myself something where I'd like to settle in and start building. And to be honest, I'm getting a little discouraged. <laughs> Because I've had this home set for almost a month now. And I keep wandering around when I feel like it. And just never seem to find anything. So I guess I can set here again. What is it? Uh, set. Home. One. There we are. So here we are. I'm set at this location. And this is where I can... Uh, come back to to continue searching another time <laughs> so we're back here now and I should shouldn't have uh, come back here because it's night so let's go back to a new home that I've never shown you is home number three now I think it's home number three yeah it's home number three and here we are I have myself a mushroom island or a mushroom island with mushrooms I think is what they would call it right and here I've uh, there was mushrooms all over the place out there in the water bobbing around and I sort of just heard them in with the candy and then put a fence around them here so I've got this nice big fenced in area here and this is at the moment one of my primary sources of leather Alright, so I'll come here, uh, here's my little resource chest, so I've got, uh, let's get this stuff out of the way, I'll have uh, a few leads, get some wheat, and then I'll walk around, <coughs> and because of things on the server, uh, when they're too close together, they won't let you breed them, so I'll grab, like, this guy, and this guy, and we'll haul them off into a corner here. Okay. Then show them the candy. Release the leads. Give them the candy. Oh, this one, I, other one I must have bred too recently. 
Not to drag. Mm. Try this guy out. Mm. You too soon too. See, see, it says I can't breed because it's too crowded now. So, yeah, uh, I'll have to kill some off and before I'll be able to breed some more. Unless I can, you know, fold them into a, a, a more secluded zone. Or expand this a bit so I do have secluded zones to pull them off to. But that whole thing has an idea for me that uh, I might work on on a future episode. Uh, see if I can uh, use a smaller space to do breeding and and uh, farming of of the animal. So I just thought I'd quickly show you that I've got this mushroom island, and I can come up here. Let me eat first, and let's put this stuff away, and I can come through here. And show. The neat thing about uh, the Mushroom Island is that uh, hostile mobs can't spawn on it at night. As a matter of fact, they can't spawn anywhere in the chunks of the of the uh, uh, mushroom island biome at all. All right, so as long as you stay within the biome, you can go all the way down to bedrock and you're not going to find monsters at all. So if you want to just be resource gathering, it's probably one of the best places to be doing it is on the mushroom biome. So that's kind of neat, eh? And this is pretty big. You can see I'm wandering around a lot up here. And uh, this is a pretty big island that I've got here. Pretty darn big. Yeah, and it stretches on way out to there too. So, yeah, th this is a kind of a neat spot. But uh, uh, I'm I'm told that the 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 mushrooms would naturally spawn in this biome. So when I got here, I started killing them, thinking more were gonna spawn. But eventually, I got to the point where it's like, eh. I don't see anybody spawning here, you know? So, I took the last few that were all bobbing out in the ocean and herded them all in and started, you know, uh, breeding them, right? So, uh, at least I have a nice quiet spot here where I can just wander around and don't have any mobs trying to attack me. That's the great thing about this. So, as long as I stay, you can see how the the ocean has a different color. Well, that bor that's the border between the ocean biome and the mushroom biome. So, I could build land out to that border, and it would still be safe from no mobs uh, 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 spawning, no hostile mobs. So that's kind of cool, eh? All right. So that's it for showing this part. Now let's go back to home too, because this is where, oops, this is where all the major activity is, and these other things, these other three places I've warped off to are just spots that uh, uh, are sort of uh, annexations, is probably a good way of putting it. <laughs> ah, it's funny, we back our way right up to this thing here. Um... This was one of my first finds, too, where I found this zombie spawner. And uh, then eventually I found the second one that I actually farmed, but because this one, I already pre-planned that I would turn this into a zombie villager purifying system, very similar to the one that Etho designed, but even more similar to the one that Pixel and I designed after it, right? Uh, on the previous server version. So I haven't gotten around to doing that, but my plan actually is is that that the, the uh, villagers that I spawn up from here, I'm going to be minecarting them off away from this village to a new village that I'll be creating that's exclusively designed for harvesting the villagers themselves, right? So, 
uh, this will supply me with a pretty good supply and variation of seed villagers to start that with and I can always use it to get more if they die off or or anything happens to them so and there is uh you know uh, obviously caves coming off of this that I've explored to a certain degree but might need to explore some more in the near future but we'll see for now it's a pretty much done deal and after a while uh, you can see it's all plains over there and I went venturing out that way to see if I could find a horse and I couldn't so I ended up venturing I believe off in this direction and went quite a ways I probably went 500 blocks or more maybe close to a thousand and finally found some more plains that actually had a few horses so I uh, eventually, you know, brought them in. I had them fenced, just fenced in here for a while, but then I thought, no, they need to have a good proper barn here. And after seeing some videos, I thought of doing a stable that gives them an outer fenced in area that they could wander out into, feel more like they're outside. But then, you know, uh, that leaves them open to being uh, poached by poachers. So I thought, nah, it's better to just keep them in a nice locked up building so the block log can log if someone breaks in and steals a horse. So that's that story. So they're completely inside, but it's kind of neat how they're typically standing here looking out the windows at me, which I kind of think is neat. When I go inside, they all turn around and look at me, but whenever I'm outside walking along, there they are, they're all looking out the windows at me, which is kind of neat. Now here, at this end here, this fence is a recent addition. And I'm when I say recent, I mean it hasn't even been recorded because it was done just recently, right? Uh, done since my last recording. And over here... I have some torches in the ground, and oh no, they're melting the snow! Ah, I liked having the nice smooth snow out here. But uh, what they're doing is they're marking off chunk borders. So these torches here that are on top of fence posts are marking off one chunk border, and these other four torches that are just on the ground are mar marking off another chunk border that's right up against it. And the whole idea here is this this one here with a fence post is going to be just that. It's going to be a fenced-in area uh, that will be used for storage and harvesting. And then over here, this next chunk is going to be basically a sort of factory that breeds the cows. So I'll, I'll be breeding cows here in this chunk, and then they'll be being piped over to this chunk where they can be stored. Because once a cow that was bred over in this chunk is transported to this chunk, then this chunk over here will allow me to breed another cow. So oh, I got a breeding system that I'm going to build that's based on one that I saw from... Uh, zoom avoid yeah so when i do the video on that i'll mention his name again so i recently put this fence around here and until then it was just animals wandering around everywhere i had uh the cows the sheep and the pigs as well as some chickens wandering around now i've gotten rid of the chickens and over here we've got a fenced-in area here where I put the pigs a little while back. And when I put this fenced-in area here, I only had two pigs. So it was easy to get them in here and start breeding them. So uh, I don't eat the pig meat much, but I thought, well, I'll have some in here just in case something happens and I want pigs. So there's the pigs. And... Uh, I still had the cows and the sheep all intermingling and wandering around this whole area out here. Because like I say, this fence line here is really new. <coughs> so, um, let's 
get to this fenced in area. So now we just crossed the line where this whole area here is empty because this is the access point here to the uh, uh, the pig farm. But then once we get over to this side, there's another gate that leads us through into the actual sheep area. And you can see all I've got here is I've got red sheep and black sheep, mostly red sheep. They were all red sheep, but uh, a friend of mine want, needed some black wool, so I made some of them black and sheared them for their black wool. Yeah. And uh, I needed lots of red wool for something I was building. Then in the end, I didn't use the red wool. But uh, uh, then all that wool that uh, I didn't use, I ended up using to uh, carpet all of the walkways in the village. And here I keep hearing monsters, and I think it's because here I walled this up. Yeah, yeah see, I can hear a skeleton wandering around there and this was leading into a cave and I walled it up like that just so that uh, the, the the animals wouldn't get lost down there and so that monsters wouldn't come up and get my villagers before I had this fence that could stop them yay and here we have an old-time favorite and uh, something that recently happened here is I used to have Right here is where I had a nether wart farm. I had a row of nether wart, or slow sand with nether wart here, and the same thing on the other side. I had the same thing, slow sand going up to the, about the end of this building, and uh, nether wart on it. But I started to not like the look of it, and once I took it down, it's like, oh, that feels so much more open. I love it this way, so I'm going to leave it like that. So I gotta find another place for the nether wart, and I haven't relocated it yet, but I'll be growing it. You know, you don't need to grow it like crazy. You, for the amount that you need it for potions, you don't need to have a monstrous farm. So I'll, I'll replant it someplace soon. But here I have my original tree farm. And this started out small with just two strips coming off from this path. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger until I had eight strips, and each strip is 32 long. And oak is the only one that only tree that you can do this with is plant it side by side and it'll grow. You know, you don't have to leave any space at all between it and it'll grow. But uh, uh, back when we had the jobs plug in, I had the wo woodcutter job. And so I had this farm which enabled me to make a lot of money really quick. And then they removed the plug in because people were making a lot of money really quick. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that story. But by then, I had built up uh, probably five double chests of wood, and I needed that all for another project. So it was good that I had it. So now, since then, I've used up almost all that wood, and I was thinking of decommissioning this farm, but I ran out of wood, and I needed to to farm this to get some wood and it was thank goodness I still had it because the amount that I get from this gives me a real boost of wood each time I harvest it so I'm going to keep it there for when I need that boost of wood again right and here you know I wanted to see a little bit of variety so I put these into you know so this is why I have the other two types of trees here is just so that I could have some variety in the wood that I get now here's an oddball thing that occurred, is I watched Zoom Avoid create this chicken farm, and I thought, well, I'm going to try it, and if I like it, it's so nice and modular, I can build a whole bunch of them side by side. So I tried it, and it's been running for quite some time now, and it produces, but not very well. And I've watched it for a while to find out why and what's happening is the drops don't aren't getting sucked up by the hopper and drawn into the chest they're flying out all over the place so and that's block glitching and i'm gonna have to try this again in my single player and see if it works better because if you have a whole bunch of these set up modularly you can get quite quite a bit of cooked chicken output and quite a bit of the feathers as well too so 
it will just have to try it again. Like I say, for now, it doesn't work that good. But let's go up and take a look at it anyway, because it might be, you know, it seemed to work when he was using it. Right? So up here, we just have a chamber here with all the chickens. And the trap door there was there, so I could throw eggs in to populate this. Uh, you don't want to have too many up here. You can see, what have I got? I got seven of them up here. I could probably fit an eighth one here. But uh, I'm thinking of redoing this with a larger area up here for them. And the carpeting there has hoppers underneath it. Right? And that hopper, t those hoppers take any eggs they lay and runs it down to the next layer. Right? So on the next layer here, the hoppers drop the eggs into uh, the dispenser. And the dispenser dispenses them into this half slab block. So, uh, and uh, the chicks are only a half height uh, mob, so they can stand in the space between the top of that half height block and the lava. So the chicks don't die standing in there. But as soon as they become adults and they become a full height block in a full block of height, now they're standing with their head in lava and they get cooked and their drops are supposed to drop in. But like I say, with block glitching that I'm experiencing, the drops are flying all over and I'm not actually getting them. So we'll just have to, uh, that's why, you know, I, I didn't actually do a video of the build on that because it didn't seem to go very good. Like I say, I'll have to try it in single player. If it works good there, then I'll do a video of it there. Yeah. So, tree farm heaven. But I've got plans for this tree farm. And uh, I'll be uh, showing you that plan in an upcoming video. Just not today. There's so many things that I need to do. But uh, just the time to do them. And among other things you're doing. There just doesn't seem to be time to get everything done. So, you know, originally... This was kind of somewhat hilly desert, but way out in this end, I flattened it out. Like, this was a pretty tall hill here, up to that height of that, that hill over there. And, you know, it came close to these buildings, so I leveled it all when I was putting the fence in. Just so I'd have all this space to work with. That way I could expand the farms that were here to be big farms. Oh, okay, so I did replant my uh, nether, nether wart, <laughs> and it's all ready to harvest, too. Yeah, it grows pretty fast, no biggie. When you need it, you harvest it. So, yeah, a little more sugar cane down here, but, uh, I don't know, you can, yeah, you can, you can start to see it from here, if you know what you're looking for. You can see it and know what you're seeing, right? That's the sun going down, though, eh? Okay, well, that doesn't matter, because uh, if we make a run for it, we can make it in time. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should show before I show this. Because I think this is the last thing that I want to show. What's have we got out this way? We've shown everything that we've got out this way, I believe. Because so I showed you my, my farm, my mine. Oh no, what was this? I believe this was a straight drop down into my branch mine. So let's go check that out. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a nice quick access to the branch mine. <laughs> so we'll home ourselves back and then run back to this point and not jump in. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, you can see I've got, you know, nice, busy, busy villager activity here. And, you know, as much as I set this up so I can trade with the villagers, I never actually have. You know, the, the whole survival aspect of the game is it, you find the resources you need yourself. You gather those resources and you build things with them and whatnot. And, uh, I guess... There was a time when I thought that 
getting resources from the villagers by trading was a great thing but that was when I was a lot more of an amateur type with the game and needed that help but I've managed to build this up without trading with them at all now here we have the tunnel and I still keep meaning to put stairs in here <laughs> I really should I really, really, really should, but I'll do that when I come in and gather the resources. You can see that cut right through a ravine there. So let's run through here. This isn't a very long run, but it's a run nonetheless. You can see I haven't gathered any of the resources in here. So when I go to do that, that's when I'll put the stairs in. Because I'm getting kind of sick of, you know, coming down is not bad, but hopping your way all the way back out is a bit of a drag. Because you're usually going to get hungry before you get out of here. Now the only thing that makes me not really want to put stairs in is this part. Because if I cover this part over with glass, you don't get that as good an... Or if I cover the glass over with stairs, you don't get that uh, as good a, a, a look all around when you look, right? So this was all water, but once I covered it over, well, not water anymore. <laughs> so the glass was where the water was right so I was cutting my way through water when I originally built this walkway so here we are inside the building for the witch farm and we've lit up some of the caves here but obviously not enough because we don't see anything spawning over there do we but you know we're we've half slabbed the entire area over and this is the control building so when I flip this lever what happens is it starts shifting the floors back and forth uh, where the witches would spawn because that used to be a witch hut right there where those floor pieces are so I'll leave that running and we'll go take a look at it and it's pretty safe here because this is all half slab I think I just heard something. I think there might have been a mob already in there getting channeled away. But you can see here, we can get in kind of close. There's no mobs around right now. And this, the floor is just half slabs. And the pistons are shifting it back and forth. So if there's a mob on there, it'll fall through the floor. And this ring out here just represents the mis minimum distance I can be for them to spawn. So that's the 24 block boundary from the spawning pads. So as long as I stay outside of that area, I should get spawns. But I haven't lit the, the uh, caves up enough. I've been busy with other things, sorry to say. But hey, it's a sight to see, and we have seen it in action. Uh, there was a video that I did recently when... Uh, shortly after this was built where I showed some monsters actually passing through this it was after we were just finished uh, doing a video lighting up the caves yeah so it was the end of I think it was a two-parter that I did so uh, and it is okay you see them floating up through the the mob evader here and they drop down and they're good to get sucked up by the hoppers underneath let's go down here so we can see that uh, See, we got this line of hoppers, and that's where they're falling, and that brings it out, and it all falls into the chests here. And this is what we've collected so far. Doesn't look like a lot, but it's a nice variety of stuff that can be used for various applications. I'm particularly interested in the glowstone and the, the free gunpowder. I don't have to kill a creeper to get the gunpowder all of a sudden. Yeah, so it's an okay thing. And this was our original underground entrance to it all. And then for a while we had this upper path to get back. But this pad here that we're on that's all half slabs goes 128 blocks in every direction from where I would be standing while I'm waiting for the mobs to spawn. Now the original builds that I was seeing uh, had that 128 block border based on that spawning pad but I thought to myself well mobs are spawning based on where I'm standing not based on where something else is uh, so it's a 128 block 
radius around me is where all the random mobs are spawning. So that's why I built it based on here. So it's when I'm standing like right here. Now I'm at the center of that 128 block radius. So let's take a quick look underneath here. Because this is where we have the water source that channels them all away. And there's a, there's a access in behind there for maintenance as well. And this is where all the redstone is that's operating the pistons and whatnot. And down here we once again have the hopper timer that times them shifting back and forth. So it's all very cool and groovy. Very cool and groovy. And ever since uh, I made it so I had stairs on both sides, I for some reason cut the 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 uh, hall that joined them up top. So here we have the bot, the right side now, and this comes down to a very pretty much mirror image of the other side, and once again goes down under to the timer. Yay! So eventually, hopefully, I'll have the uh, all the caves underneath here lit up well enough to get the spawning rate up on that. But I'm not making it a top priority because you can see everywhere underneath this half slab platform that I've created is where I have to light up all the all of the tunnels. So if you can run around, you can see, yeah, but all I've got is passive mobs that have wandered in from the grass around the borders. And uh, it was down in this spot here is where I've done some major lighting of the caves already. And you can see here we're getting into extreme hills biome where I had to do a lot of cutting to lower this down. It was pretty time consuming. And this was the worst spot where it got the highest. But I definitely got a lot of cobble in the process. More caves there that I have to go in and light up. But even once I do the ones that I found. You can just barely see the edge of the farm from here. Even after the ones that I found. There's still a ton of caves under here that I haven't found. Oh jeez. Look at the Enderman going nutsoid. Ta. That's funny. Yeah, so this is the 128 block boundary around the whole thing. And this pad basically equates to being a 256 by 256 square. All right, so you work out the math. And that basically means there are about 65,000 half slabs laid down here to make this platform. That's quite a bit, eh? <laughs> Uh, it's okay. I, it was kind of neat doing it. I thought I might make some farms up on this flat space because it's definitely a lot of flat space that mobs aren't going to be spawning that I could take advantage of. Eh? And this path here leads right back to home. This is the above ground path to home. Yahoo. And we're darn hungry from running all around like that. Yay. There we go. Back home, safe and sound. <clears throat> so, uh, among some of the future planned projects here, some that are medium and major, is obviously, like I said, I'm going to be redoing the tree farm here. There's a future plan for it. So that's one major thing that I'm planning to do. Another major thing that needs to be done is this this villager uh zombie villager purifying system needs to be built and set up. And like I say, that will actually channel them off in this direction to <coughs> probably way over a little beyond that hill, or maybe onto that hill, where uh another new mini village gets set up for them. <coughs> So that's another really major project coming up. Another thing that I've thought of that I'd like to do is build real walls around this whole thing. So instead of just having a fence here, 
to a few blocks beyond it have an actual brick wall. So that's part of why I've saved all this cobblestone that I have here. Chests and chests of it, and you can see I'm already underway cooking it and converting it into stone bricks. So I have a couple chests inside already full of stone bricks, and I have these ones that I'm working on. So here I keep pulling out more cobble and putting it into the furnaces. So I have uh, these two furnaces here, and I'll comment and let you know that uh, this this being the original blacksmith building here that I've modified, before I modified it, originally all I did was put a door on the opening that was there. And you know what? Villagers never went into it. They never went to it. They'd walk out to this terrace that was out here and just run around in circles and never actually go into the building. Until I put a full wall up against it here with a different doorway. And now they come in and out here. They come into here at night a lot. So just that little change to the building. Taking down that internal wall. Extending this external wall. Made all the difference. And I moved the, uh, the furnaces used to be right here and here. And I put them up there and there to, you know, save space. Right? And that worked out really good. So in here... I just finished cooking some uh, wood to make charcoal because I was all out of fuel here. So I just keep uh, filling these furnaces up. In total I've got 16 furnaces here. So that gives me a pretty good throughput when I actually am making use of them here. But right now I was out of fuel so I was just cooking a ton of wood. So now I'm out of wood. <laughs> and I need to go and harvest the farm. So I think we've pretty much toured everything that there is that I've been up to here. And um, I guess we can cut it, cut the episode at this point. Oh, I guess I didn't mention this because there was something, I, th I don't know if it's a server-based thing and i got to try it on uh, my single player and see if it is, is when I threw an egg in the well over there, and a chick hatched. Usually in less than a minute the chick would drown and die. So over here I had this other contraption set up, this other little room, where I had a block suspended in the air here. This this was cut open and I had one block in the air here and I'd throw eggs at that block and the chicks would fall down in there and be trapped in here without water. And when they grew up to be chickens, then I would open the door and, with seeds in hand, lead them out over to the well and lure them into the well. And they were pretty stupid. They'd hop right in. So then I'd have fully grown chickens in the well here was how I actually populated this to turn it into the egg that that had eggs overflowing out of the containers all the time to the point where I had to shut it down. <laughs> Yeah, so that's about it. I think we've covered everything that there is in the Neophys realm on the Cobble Cobble server. So I hope you enjoyed watching these last couple episodes while I toured all around. And thanks for coming by. Everybody take care. And until next time. This is Neofiz, signing out.